Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, I'm Tammy at Tam's Creative Corner, and I mostly work in resins and acrylics with some mixed media things thrown in there like glitters and crystals and such. And today will be no different. I'm gonna do an acrylic feather string pole. I'm gonna put some glitter on it and then I'm gonna clear coat it with a beautiful Pabio Crystal Bio resin. So if you'd like to see how I make my feather string poles, then let's get started. So the best way to practice these string poles is on a ceramic glazed tile. That way if you mess up, you can wipe it right off and start all over. And in this case, I'm gonna do two feathers for you because I had leftover paint and I thought, why not? The colors turned out beautiful. Make sure your tile is level before you begin pouring, otherwise your feather will slide right off and I've had that happen a lot of times. Today I'm using Arteza's set of premium acrylic paints. There's like 60 colors, it's amazing. And so I chose these six colors and I will link that below and they've even supplied me with a discount code for you good through October 25th of 2019. Depending on when you're watching this video, it might be down there. So I highly recommend these paints. I've also used their titanium white and all of my paint mixtures are mixed. Mostly Floetrol, a little bit of acrylic paint and a little bit of water till I get it to the consistency that I like. Now, I don't have an exact formula because all paints have different densities, even in the same paint set. For instance, the metallic colors will be heavier and the white colors will be heavier, so you need to mix a little more Floetrol or water. So it's kind of like I'm just winging it. I haven't got an exact formula down for you, but this is where you can experiment and play with your paints until you get them to the consistency you like. In my next video, I'll show actually mixing these colors with the Floetrol and water to give you a little more detail about how I go about doing it. So hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll get notified when that video launches. After I torch out all the bubbles in my paint, I use a piece of yarn for my string pull. And then I'm going to pour my paints actually in two different um, areas, so I have two of the same color palette. You just can't see it yet, but I'll move the camera and you'll be able to see it in a minute. And I just pour them in a variation that I think might look good combined next to each other in my string pole. And again, this takes a lot of experimenting and trial and error. So here you can see the two pours I made. I just lay my yarn in, I double it over, I'm sorry my hands are blocking your view. I should have set up a second angle for you. And then I lay my string down and pull out to the right, swooping a little to create that feather. I then wring it out, getting rid of the excess paint, and then using that same yarn, I put it in my next bit of color, folding it over, and then saturating it by tapping it with my finger into the paint, lifting it up, I lay it along the middle of that half and I pull it out and create the other side. And then I dip my string back into the paint in no particular order and I saturate it again and this is going to become the center quill of the feather. And then I like to go a step further and take just the tip of my yarn and create those little wispy feather bits that you see on a feather. It just makes it a little more um, natural and interesting looking. And there you have feather number one. Since I have extra paint, I'm gonna move on and create a second tile with a second feather using the same paints and colors. So I go ahead and I pour my white mixture over the tile and then I torch those bubbles out using my little culinary torch before moving on and recreating my paints. So I freshen up my paints using the same colors. 
I vary the color gradient a little bit differently because I could see what I liked and didn't like on that first one. And that's why you really need to experiment. And remember, the colors that you lay next to each other are going to blend together in your feather. So keep that in mind when you're experimenting. And even having a color wheel or color chart handy is a good idea when you're starting to learn how to work colors together. So here we go again, laying that same yarn I used in the first feather down into my colors. And you can make your feathers as wide or as narrow as you want. It just depends on the arc you put in when you pull it out. That swipe didn't turn out very well, so I dip my yarn back in the paint and I go for it a second time on the same side and still not in love with what I get. Out of pure frustration, I decide to dip into my second set of paint and move on to the other side and see what I'll get this time. And this side turns out really great. Some days they turn out just great on the first swipe and some days I wipe off three or four tiles before I get a feather that I think is good enough to move on and resin. <laughs> so I take my yarn and I dip it in that paint and again I go for it and the third time's the charm and I have a well-balanced feather and I like the colors. Now that I'm happy with the sides of my feather, I'm gonna go ahead and create the quill running down the center, just like we did before. And then I'll go on and add some of the little wispy bits at the bottom of the feather to make it more realistic and give it a little more interest. And it looks really pretty when you add the glitter. I cover these up and let the paint dry fully before moving on and adding my glitter. I like to use Stickles Glitter Glue. They come in lots of different colors, and um, at this point, it doesn't really look that amazing, but once you add the resin, it really makes everything pop, and it's just gorgeous, and that's really where the magic is. So today, I'm using a new resin that I've never tried before. Pabio sent me this Bio Resin. It's crystal, and I'm telling you, it is crystal clear. It's beautiful has very little odor, and it didn't bother me at all to work with. It is a two to one ratio resin, so you use two parts resin and one part hardener, and you mix it together for three to five minutes just like you would with any of my other resins before pouring it on. I wipe my tile off with an alcohol wipe just to make sure there's no particles or anything that would get into my resin, and I begin pouring. And this is where you see all of that color and sparkle underneath transform and just come to life. It's amazing and it does feel like I'm creating something magical when I pour resin on these. Using my little culinary torch, I just am popping all of those little air bubbles that occurred the heat brings the bubbles to the surface, releasing them. Then I cover it up and I let it cure for about 48 hours. Now that my resin's cured, I need to remove the tape that I put on the back along with all of those resin drips. You can use a heat gun or your torch. Just be really careful not to burn yourself, please. So I just heat it up, which softens the resin and the tape will peel right off along with all of your little resin drips. You can do different things with the back of your tiles. You can spray paint them, you can add felt or cork as a backing, but I like to put mine in a little frame. And these frames can either be used to hang or as a trivet. I use them as a small hangable art piece. And normally I use E6000 glue, but I misplaced it or it got lost in the move, so I'm using liquid nails in this case. I'll put both of them down in the link below. I think I prefer the E6000. And then I place my tile right in there and let it dry. And this is the final product. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. 
and it sure helps me out a whole lot if you hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And until next time, happy creating everyone!